Well, friends, let's turn in the Scriptures together, please, today in the New Testament to John's first epistle, to John's first letter. And I'm taking the reading from 1 John chapter 2, the second chapter, and I'm reading only three verses today, and I'm taking it from verse 15. John the Apostle is writing to Christian believers like you and I. And this is what he says and instructs. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he, or the one who does the will of God, abides forever, remains forever. And we trust God will bless. The reading of his precious word this morning. You know, the world has a big head. The world is big-headed. It thinks it's so wonderful and so great and so marvelous that I can't do anything wrong. Well, right away, we, we know that's not the case, is it? And the world thinks that everything will continue. They're in complete control of everything. But friends, that is not the situation. Because my text this morning is the beginning of verse 17. And the world is passing away. The world is passing away. And what it speaks of here is speaking of the world system. It's passing away, friends. So don't get comfortable. What you see is not going to last very long. The world is passing away. The world is passing away. I want to tell you something. In spite of what the world thinks, the world is so old-fashioned. In fact, to put it like the young people say, Oh, it's so yesterday's news. That's the world. It's so yesterday's news. And the world thinks it's up to date. And the world thinks it's got things in control. And the plans that the world has for itself in the system in the world. Friends, the world is passing away. They don't just realize it. It's passing away. The world is so old-fashioned. Three things about the world I want to speak about today, friends. First of all, the facts regarding this world. The facts regarding this world. In Hebrews chapter 1, we read from verse 10, and the writer addresses the Lord and is quoting there from the Old Testament, You, Lord, in the beginning led the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish. The world is passing away. They will perish. But you, Lord, remain. You will continue throughout. And they will all grow old like a garment. Like a cloak. You will fold them up. They will be changed. But you are the same. And your years will not fail. It means they're your years will have no end. Hallelujah. The facts regarding this world. Jesus said in Matthew 24 verse 35, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. There's the facts regarding this world. The world is passing away, but the words of Jesus will never pass away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we've seen the facts regarding this world. The world is so old-fashioned. But then secondly, I want us to see the form of this world. The form of this world. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, from verse 31 we read, and Paul writes, the form of this world is passing away. Another rendering is, translation is, the fashion of this world is passing away. The fashion of this world is passing away. Put it like this. The, the clothes we're wearing today, the fashion, 
We weren't wearing them 30 years ago. Some 40 years ago, we're not wearing what we wore 40 years ago. And some, some of us would say, praise the Lord. Some fashions are good and some fashions are, you know. But if someone said years ago, you know, fashion comes and goes, but it's style that remains. It's what looks good. It's not right. But the fashion, the form of this world is passing away. See that? The world is passing away. But Paul goes on to say, I do not want you to be without care. That means I do not want you to be unconcerned. I say, ah, don't worry about it. No, worry. No, Paul says, no, don't be unconcerned. The form of this world. Hebrews 11.25, the Bible speaks of the passing pleasures of sin that we find in this world. The passing pleasures of sin. Just like the world, it's passing away. Proverbs chapter 31. Uh, this might not be such an encouraging verse to you all, but it says, verse 30, charm is deceitful and beauty is passing. All right? So just in case you think, well, you know, I'm the most beautiful person in the world, you need to get over yourself. All right? S especially those like Hollywood-style people, right? And, uh, you know, it's okay, you know, with all their money, you know, they think they can continue to look beautiful with all the surgeries they're getting. And, and sadly, when you look at some of them, they can hardly, you never know if they're actually smiling or not because they can't stretch their skin anymore. It's so tight. And they try to look so young. They need to realize, friends, that charm is deceitful and beauty is passing. It's passing. James chapter 1, the writer there says from verse 9, Let the lowly brother glory and boast in his exaltation. But the rich in their humiliation. Because as a flower of the field, he will pass away. Friends, it doesn't matter whether you've got a lot of money or you don't. The Lord tarries, you're going to pass away. Just like the world will pass away. In fact, this connects to Peter's first letter, chapter 1, from verse 23. Peter's writing to born-again Christians, and he's reminding them, saying, having been born again, not by corruptible and perishable seed, but by incorruptible and imperishable seed, through the word of God, which lives and abides and remains and stays forever. Because... And Peter quotes the word of God from the Old Testament. All flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withers, and its flower falls away. But the word of the Lord endures forever. The word of the Lord remains forever. The word of the Lord stays forever. The form of this world, friends, is passing away. In Psalm 144, verse 4, the Bible reminds us that man is like a breath. His days are like a passing shadow. The Word of God is emphasizing how fleeting our existence is in the natural. The old saying in the world is, here today, gone tomorrow. How true that can be, my friend. The form of this world is passing. James, when he writes in chapter 4, verse 4, gives a wonderful definition of this question. He says, what is your life? It is a, even a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. Have you ever seen a vapor? It's there and suddenly, where would that go? That's our lives, friends. That's our lives. And that's also the form of this world which is passing away. The system of this world is passing away. You see, we talk about there's the physical world, but there's also the system of the world as well. In fact, David says in Psalm 39 verse 5, Certainly, every man, every person at their best is but a vapor. And then we have the word sila, which they believe means stop for a moment. Take stock of what you've just read, what you've just sung. Think about, meditate on that. And so we should meditate on that, friends. Think on that. As David writes, 
everyone at their best is but a vapor. That's our best. And when you and I think of at our best, you might have had a particular age in your life that that was my best. I was at my peak. According to God's word, that was just a vapor. Our best is but a vapor. In Psalm 78 verse 39, the writer says, The Lord remembered that they were but flesh, a breath that passes away and does not come again. You think of that. Every time you breathe a breath, that breath is gone. You can never get that breath back again. It's gone. You've only got the next one to follow. Every breath that you and I breathe out is gone forever. The Word of God is emphasizing the form of this world. This world is passing away, my friend. Nothing lasts in the natural. Nothing lasts. In 2 Corinthians 4, I love what Paul writes to the believers here. In 2 Corinthians 4 from verse 16, he's encouraging them. He says, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing. Yet the inward man is being renewed day by day because our light affliction, which is but for a moment, why is that? Because our lives are passing away. This world is passing away. Our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, because the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. We can see the world right now. We can see the system of the world right now, but it's temporary. Hallelujah. It's passing. This world is passing away. The things which we can see with our eyes, friends, is temporary. The things we cannot see with our physical eyes Those things are eternal. So there's things. So in order to see the things which are eternal, how do you do that? It's by faith. It's by faith. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. You can't see it with your physical eyeballs. So only faith through Jesus can see these things. That's why John writes, and we had it as part of our reading this morning, Verse 15, he's saying and he's instructing the Christian believers, the followers of Christ, do not love the world or the things in the world. Do not love the world or the things in the world. Now, remember, for those of you who can remember, back, I remember back in 1969, there was a song got to the, the top of the, called the hit parade, the charts, got to number one. It was Louis Armstrong singing that song, Wonderful World. You know what I mean? You know, It's a great song, and he sang it really well. And I think to myself, (laughs) what a wonderful world. And of course, what's he singing? He's He's speaking about the actual creation of the world and the good things that happen in the world. And thank God there are many good things that happen in the world, and we thank God for it. But man has corrupted and desolated the world. And the system of the world, he wasn't singing about the system of the world. He was singing about creation and the good things that happen in life. But here when we talk about the system of the world, we talk about the influence of the world. That's why John says to the the Christians like you and I, he says, do not love the world or the things in the world. And we can quickly say, amen. But you know, friends, I'm sorry, but so many Christians today love the things in the world. Now now listen, friends, we have to exist being in the world. But as someone said many years ago, we're in the world, but we shouldn't be of the world. We shouldn't be like the world. And of course, there are things in the world that we need physically in order to survive. Jesus spoke about it in Matthew chapter 6. He spoke about clothing. He spoke about water. He spoke about food. Things that we need in order to exist and to maintain our living. But the Bible is speaking there are things that we don't need from the world. And how often do we go, oh, well, you know, I need to cling on to this. I need that. Do we really? The Bible calls them hindrances. You might say, you get the really spiritual Christian, but it's not a sin. It's not a sin. Yeah, 
But as the Bible says in Hebrews 12, verse 2, it can be a hindrance. Verses 1 and 2. It can, and friends, if something from this world, if it, if it holds us back from going on with Jesus, it holds us back in a walk with Christ and knowing the blessings of the Lord in our life, then it's not worth having. It's, you don't want to have it. Why would you want to have something It's going to hold you back and give you a second-class life in the Lord? Why would you want that? That's why John says, do not love the world or the things in the world. For example, when Paul was writing to young Timothy in his second letter to him in chapter 4, and he was going through a number of situations and names, and, and this is what he writes. He says to Timothy, Timothy, Demas, that was one of the people that used to be with Paul, Demas has forsaken me. And he gives the reason why he's forsaken Paul and his evangelistic team. He says, Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world. Having loved this present world. Now that must have taken quite a bit because you think about it back in Paul's day under the, the heel of the Roman Empire. So obviously there, there were things and temptations that Demas must have thought, that's more important to me now. I'm going to step back from this uh, working for the Lord. I'm going to step back and just enjoy life for a change. And Paul says that Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world. How many Christian believers today are in that position? They're not walking with the Lord as they should. Why? Because they love this present world. And they love the things of the world. Sadly, it seems that the, almost like the cry of, of the fleshly believer is to get as close to the world as possible and yet still say, oh, I'm a Christian believer. Friends, we should show the world that we're so different, that we've got such life within us, the life of God's Spirit within us, that we don't exist because of the things of the world. We exist because of the things of God. Hallelujah. James goes on with the same theme. In chapter 4 of his epistle, verse 4, asks this question. Do you not know, and he's writing to believers, do you not know, do you not realize that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Oh, but pastor, that's one of those scriptures we pass over. That kind of, that niggles me a bit. I like to pass over that scripture because it, it brings a little bit of conviction. Can, can we not talk about that? Friends, that's part of God's word. It's as much inspired as John 3 and 16. Do you not realize that friendship with the world is enmity with God? But I want to be friends as possible with the world. The amount of Christians over the years I've met, and they've wanted to be as close to the world as possible, even with unsaved people, nothing wrong with that, but they've done it to the detriment of their testimony. They've done it so much, the people that they've come alongside who don't know Christ, after some time, People have turned and said to them, I've known you for so many years. How, what do you mean? I never knew you were a Christian believer. Whoa, big red flag there right away. There's something wrong right there. Do you not realize that friendship with the world is enmity with God? And James continues, Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Now friends, that's pretty strong. But you know something? The truth is strong. The truth is not watered down. The truth is strong. Well, you know, well, I, 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 I don't like, I, I, have to, I have to laugh along with their jokes. And I, I have to listen to their filthy stories. I, I have to do that because, well, you know, if I say so, I'm going to be the odd one out. Really? Really? You're willing to compromise all that Christ has done for you? When he gave his life at Calvary for you, you're willing to give that, and you're willing to compromise that, and because of you, of those that you mingle with who are unsaved, that doesn't mean you stop being friends. You still. What about telling them about Jesus? Well, actually, you know, I, I don't agree with that. You know, I don't laugh with that. You know, because you know, I, I just, I, I, I don't agree with that because I've got something better than that. I don't need to to to, to dwell on stuff like that because the Bible says, you know. It's all about light, and it's all about thinking on 
wonderful things and precious things and beautiful things. And so things like that, friends. So we need to realize that friendship with the world is enmity with God. And we make ourselves enemies of God. And friends, we shouldn't be surprised about the form of this world. Doesn't the Bible tell us, tell us in 1 John 5 and 19 that the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one? Under the sway of the wicked one. The word there, sway, means influence. The whole world lies under the influence of Satan. But thank God, this world is passing away. Hallelujah. This world system is passing away. It's going to be here today and gone tomorrow. Very soon, my friend. Very soon. John continues and he writes in 1 John 4 and 5 and he says, they are of the world. He's referring to false prophets. Those who go around saying, well, everything is great in the world. Everything's fine. You don't have to worry. Just keep living the way you're living. God's a God of love. He's not going to judge people. He's not going to send anyone to hell. Everyone's going to heaven. You know, don't worry about it. Friends, the Bible says they're false prophets. These are people who are falsely proclaiming a false gospel. They are lying. And here we see John says that they are of the world. And you see, they are of the world because that's what the world wants to hear. And in another place in the Word of God, it's in one of Timothy's epistle. It talks about the time will come when they'll heap up for themselves teachers who will speak in and uh, appeal to their itching ears. Because they'll tell the people what they want to hear. And so the world will say, hey, you're our buddy. Let me put my arm around you. That's it. Keep telling me how wonderful I am and everything's great. But friends, that's why the Bible says they're of the world. And John continues, therefore, they, they speak as of the world. They speak as if they are of the world. It says, and the world hears them. Why does the world hear them? Because it's what they want to hear. But friends, let me tell you something. This isn't popular. This isn't politically correct for today. Hey world, you're passing away. You're in the middle of passing away. And guess what? There is no cardiac arrest for you. There is no CPR for the world. Hallelujah. It's passing away. Romans chapter 12 verse 2. What does it say to the believers here? It says, do not be conformed to this world. In the J.B. Phillips rendering in modern English of that phrase, do not be conformed to this world. Here's what it is. Do not let the world squeeze you into its own mold. Now if the world was to come up against, say, do this, we'd go, no, I'm a Christian believer. You see, you've got to remember, friends, the devil is our enemy, but don't treat him as being completely stupid, okay? He's not stupid. By the way, he's not all-knowing He's ignorant a lot as well. But remember this. When he comes against the people of God, comes against individual followers of Jesus, he doesn't come up to you right away and say, I'm coming to fight you. No. Do you know why? He's a coward. The only weapon he has is fear. What will he do? He'll come up and say, whisper something in your ear. Oh, you're not a very good Christian, are you? Off he goes. Where did I get that? Where did I get that thought from? A few days later, are you really a Christian? Away again. What was that? What happens? He slowly, there's nothing wrong with doing that. On you go, enjoy yourself. Off he goes again. What happens is, when you're told things enough, even in the natural life, you start to believe them. And so what happens is, What's, what's, what's happening? Not only the enemy, but even the world. Even through, other, even through the world system. It can slowly squeeze you into its mold. And when it does it that way, you don't recognize it as quickly. And you're not as alert as you normally are. Say, how did this happen to me? Because it was slowly squeezing you into its own mold. But the Bible says to the believers, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And how do we have our mind renewed? 
by the Spirit of the living God, hallelujah, that we may have the mind of Christ. Peter, in his first letter, chapter 2 and 11, he's encouraging the, the Christian believers there, and he says, Beloved, I beg you, I implore you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. And you see, friends, there are only going to be fleshly lusts in this world when this form of the world is continuing. But Peter says, I beg you, Christian believers, as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. God's people, Peter describes them here, first of all, God's people are sojourners. What's a sojourner? Well, it's an old English word. So, you know, to so journey along. But the word actually means a sojourner is a temporary resident. To put it more up to date, especially in light of the world at this time, transients. We are sojourners. We are transients. We are temporary residents. Then Peter says, I beg you, because you're sojourners and pilgrims. We have the idea what pilgrims are. Not right. There used to be a, a well known singer, he's dressed in black, top, a pilgrim. And we we'll sing about pilgrims. We, we, we have an idea about pilgrims. What they are. What pilgrims means? Aliens. And by the way, I'm not talking about little green men. Okay? Aliens, the proper meaning which means foreigners. Not of this place. So that's what Peter is reminding us. He says, you're so generous, you're pilgrims. You're pilgrims. What, what, what Peter is saying is, in other words, you are those who are passing through this life in a strange and foreign land and world. That's what God's people are. In fact, looking back, when Peter says you're sojourners, you're temporary residents, to look at it in the scriptural context, God's people are tent dwellers. Spiritually speaking, we are tent dwellers because in Abraham's time back in the time of the patriarchs, they were constantly on the move. How? Because they had mobile housing. There were tents. You have Bedouins like that in the Middle East still. They, they move from time to time. They're never in the same place for very long. They keep on moving. They are tent dwellers. And brothers and sisters in Christ, spiritually speaking, we are tent dwellers. We are temporary residents. And because as God's people we are tent dwellers, listen to this, because we are tent dwellers in this world, do not hammer in the tent pegs too deep. Remember that. Because we're tent dwellers, don't hammer in the pegs too deep. Because we're not going to be here for long. You'll the old song, Christian song. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Do you know why? Because we're passing through. We are temporary residents. And another reason why, because Paul says in Philippians 3 and 20, our citizenship is in heaven from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, that's the form of this world. Because of the form of this world, because it's passing away, we need to look to ourselves in the sense of what am I doing in this world? How am I behaving? How am I letting the world influence my walk with the Lord and my life for Jesus? The world is so old-fashioned. Why would you want to get caught up with the world? Yesterday's news. It's so old-fashioned. We've seen the facts regarding this world, the form of this world. 
The world is passing away. And finally, the future for this world. The future for this world. In Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 4, the Bible states, one generation passes away and another generation comes. But the earth abides forever. And on that, one generation passes away, another generation comes. And that's part of the reasoning when Peter speaks in his second letter, speaks about, you know, in the last days, mockers, scoffers will come and say, ha, where's the promise of his coming? Because the world, all things will continue as they were from the day of creation. Everything will just keep ticking over nicely. Thank you very much. It says, one generation passes away, another generation comes, but The earth abides forever. The future for this world. What am I speaking about? Even in the the thinking of the system of the world, there are those who believe that the world will just continue on forever. There are those who believe and talk about, oh, the day that the world is going to be destroyed. Hey, they've been making movies out of it the past number of years, and they're making millions out of it, putting fear into our lives, and people are paying to be scared out of their wits, as it were, and just think that the world is going to be destroyed. The world is going to, it's going to be, the world will die, the world will be destroyed, the world will be no more. Friends, that is not according to the Word of God. It's not according to Scripture. The earth abides forever. The earth remains and stays forever. So what's this about? It was back in 19, I think it was 1969, 70 again. Just, it was sung by a number of people, but even sung by very well-known singers in the world. You'll recognize this part of the, the song. Life goes on, and this old world will keep on turning. Life goes on, and this old world will keep on turning. Listen carefully, friend. This world, this earth, will keep on turning, but the old world will not keep on turning. You got that? The old world system is passing away. There's coming a day when it's going to cease forever. Hallelujah. There's coming a time when the Lord says, Time's up. That's it. No more. And the Lord comes in and he takes over. Hallelujah. The future for this world. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 10. Peter writes, The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. This is pertaining to uh, to his second coming and beyond that. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Listen to this. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. The old world system is going to go. I'd like to say just in a puff of smoke, but it's going to be a big puff of smoke, my friend. It's going to go. But I want you to notice, friends, the earth, the world itself, the credit world, will remain forever. Just as a picture of you and I as God's people, don't be conformed to this world system, okay? And so the Lord is going to take that world, even with all its climate change, and with all its pollution and everything, and we're to do our best in the world even now. We're to do our best in caretaking for the world, for God's creation. Of course we are. But let me tell you, friend, God is going to have the last say. He's going to take this world, this earth, that man is slowly destroying, and he's going to transform the world. He's going to transform the earth. He's going to make a brand new world. Brand new. And they shall be burned up. That's why John says, and he writes in Revelation chapter 21, he says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Hallelujah. Because the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. The world is passing away. And John says the first earth had passed away. What does it mean? It means the world was completely transformed. The the world, the earth, my friend, completely changed by the power of God. 
Friends, this world is so old-fashioned because the world is passing away. We've looked at the facts regarding this world and the form of this world and the future for this world. In closing in a few moments, friends, listen again to the words of Jesus in Matthew 24 and 35. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words by no means will pass away. They remain forever. They stay forever. They abide forever. What words? Words like this. John 3 and 16. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Words like this. The Word of God lives and remains forever. John writes in 1 John 5 and 4. Whatever is born of God. Listen to this. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Overcomes the world. Because you know why? Because the world is passing away and it's going to die and go. But the one who's born of God is going to remain forever. Hallelujah. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Because we do. Two full ways. Because the believer can overcome the world system in this life right now. Not to be squeezed into the world's mold. But also, because when you put your trust in Jesus, not only do you receive forgiveness of sins, but the gift of eternal life. So when this world is judged and the form of this world passes away, the child of God lives forever. Hallelujah! lives forever in the presence of the Lord Himself. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. The world will go, but God's people will still be around forever. Just two more scriptures. Two or three. James 1 and 27. James writes this. He talks about pure and undefiled religion. And you've often heard it said, That religion is man-made because religion is about man seeking God whereas biblical Christianity is God seeking man. So religion is man-made. But James is making a distinction here. He's speaking about religion that is pure and undefiled. So he's speaking about that which is proper with the Lord. All right, And he says, pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this. He gives a definition in the Bible of what pure and undefiled religion is. And here's his definition. And you think, wow, it's going to be some amazing thing. It's going to be spectacular. It's going to be stupendous. Here we go. To visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. That's it. And you can only do that with the help and strength of the Holy Spirit. That's what it is. To visit orphans and widows in their trouble. Notice this. To keep oneself unspotted from the world. That's your responsibility and that's my responsibility. I'm responsible for keeping myself unspotted from the world and you're Responsible for keeping yourself unspotted from the world. As a Christian believer, you and I can never stand before the Lord and say, well, you know, Lord, someone should have warned me, they should have told me. And the Lord would say, that was your responsibility. The word unspotted there also means to keep oneself unstained from the world. Don't take the stains of the world upon you. Galatians 6 and 14 Paul says, God forbid that I should glory. God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world has been crucified to me and I've been crucified to the world. That's the bottom line, friends. Because of Jesus and His death on the cross, the world has been crucified to us and we have been crucified to the world. That's what it's about, my friends. That's what it's about. The world is passing away. I'm reading verse 17. The world is passing away and the lust of it. See, once the world goes, lust for the world goes as well. 
But the one who does the will of God abides forever, remains forever, stays forever. The one who does the will of God stays forever. John said, John wrote this epistle in his gospel, in John chapter 1 from verse 11. He says, Jesus, he came to his own people and his own did not receive him. But to as many as did receive him, he gave them power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. Listen to this. Who were born, not of the will of the flesh. That's what we have here. The world is passing away and the lust of it. Not the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but the will of God. But of God. Not born, not born of the will of the flesh or the will of man, but born of God. Friends, it's God's, God is not willing. Here's his will. God's not willing that any should perish. But God is willing that all should come to repentance. So listen to that. The world is passing away and the lust of it. But the one who does the will of God abides forever. And friends, the first thing a person, a human being can do as far as the will of God is concerned is to put their trust in Jesus. And friend, you're here today or by way of camera, if you want to do the will of God, put your trust in Jesus and live for Jesus and follow the will of God and do His will. And the Bible says you will stay and remain and abide forever. Hallelujah. The world is passing away, but the one who does the will of God remains forever. May God bless His Word to our hearts. Let's pray together. Loving Father, help us to remember Your Word. Help us to realize, Lord, that we need to keep our trust in You, our focus on You, Lord, because, Lord, You are the Savior of our souls, and we love You, Lord, and because of all that You've done and are doing for us. And I pray that Your Word will continue to speak to many hearts and lives, and that we will indeed live for Jesus. And we will trust you for all that's to come. Lord, the world is passing away. But thank you, Lord. All those that trust in you are going to continue forever. Hear us today, Lord. Help us to live for you every day by the power of your Holy Spirit. Asking all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.